The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Yes, check, please, people. It's all about licking your plate. The food was just fabulous. I should be in psychoanalysis for the amount of money I spend in restaurants. I had a horrible experience. I don't even think we were at the same <laughs> restaurant. And everybody, I'm sure, saved room for those desserts. You better. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, Education Program Director Cedric Brown is ready with a lesson in Brazilian food. As a field trip for his class, he recommends a visit to his favorite spot with its muralled walls, traditional fare, and fabulously feathered samba dancers. Public health professional Esperanza Palana likes adventure. And because she's imaginative and pennywise, she opts for the South Indian vegetarian specialties served up in minimal surroundings at her place. But first, animator Michael Lippman has a telegenic personality that doesn't shy away from voicing his opinion. He's an expert on comfort foods and feels strongly that his chosen place is the standard by which all surrounding eateries should be judged. It's in Marin, and it's called the Buckeye Roadhouse. Buckeye's got a wonderful little history. It's built right after the Golden Gate Bridge, 1937. It was known for to be a German restaurant in the county. Bill Ups and Bill Higgins took it over in 1990 and created uh, the modern Buckeye, changing the food to American traditional comfort food, and uh, but keeping its wonderful lodge-like atmosphere in, in place. Plus, you know, my food here at the Buckeye is I like to keep things uh, simple and straightforward, but I really concentrate on the flavors. For me, it's all about the flavors. We have a hot smoker on the patio in the back of the restaurant that we uh, use for uh, our, our ribs and brisket and smoked duck, and it has such a wonderful smoky flavor, and you can smell it in the restaurant. People love it. I get a huge buzz of running this restaurant and people enjoy themselves in, in many different facets and they love the food, our friendly service and they themselves have just a great time, they drink and laugh and eat and toast for different celebrations or just for a get together and part of my main jobs is to create a buzz and that's what I love the most about the business. Okay, Michael, once you've made your reservation, I, I, I've heard you do your planning of what you're going to order in the shower, is that correct? Well, Leslie, I like to plan ahead. <laughs> so when I'm. As you're soaping up. Yeah, you're, well, you know. with, with a big brisket and a little <laughs> corned beef, nothing, you know, exfoliates like a little, uh, little brisket or two. And I find my best, I do my best thinking in the shower. <laughs> and. Um, but do you go to the Buckeye regularly? I mean, this is a spot for you. I do go yeah. semi regularly. Um, you know, it's a little pricey, I'll be the first to admit, so I don't make it a weekly uh, right. sojourn, although right. I wish I could. Well, you could hang out at the bar. I, I mean, do, certainly. actually, and they're known for a signature um, cocktail, cocktail, they do the, nice the cocktails. martini, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the special Buckeye martini, I can right. highly recommend. And it's got a really lodge kind of feel to it, doesn't it? A very cozy atmosphere. Yeah, it does, and it, it really is an old roadhouse from the 30s, right. back when the 101 freeway was just a dirt road going up the coast. So right. they're kind of ghosts of smoky meats and, uh, <laughs> and you know, uh, chefs from bygone eras uh, haunting that place. And you, you can kind of smell in the back. it. <laughs> yeah, you could smell it when you walk into the, the big room. It's really right. wonderful. My partner and I went up for a lunch mm -hmm. on a Saturday and we went in and uh, just had an amazing experience. The service was right on point in that they were really friendly, they were fast, they brought out this wonderful sourdough bread that we tore into. Mm -hmm. uh, I ordered, I decided to be a little bit oh, adventurous and I ordered the, the chili lime brick chicken oh yeah and it was just this succulent chicken the juices were sealed in because of the way that it was cooked it was just fantastic 
topped with some pumpkin seed, a little bit of, of avocado salsa on the side, and a, a kind of risotto cake. Mm. Accompany it. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. What no, time to talk is about? Let's go. Come on. What are some of your favorite dishes when you go and we'll get Esperanza's over there going, oh, I hate that type of thing? Uh, well, I'm a very big fan of uh, the way they cook pretty much any kind of fish. And um, mm -hmm. it's always uh, accompanied by a sauce that's kind of savory and complex. Right. I find the food really dramatic, kind of complex comfort food. And uh, uh, they match them with sides that uh, are very comfort like. It was hard at first to, uh, to decide. There were, everything is described in a very um, uh, enticing way, I would say. Uh, I had the duck, so um, it was cooked perfectly. It was uh, succulent. Tricky. It mm -hmm. is tricky. It is. Um, it can, you know, it can go wrong and get very dry. But this was, it was a, a optimal balance of crispiness and juiciness. Um, it, it was, it was quite good. Um, overall, uh, you said dramatic in the menu. That I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, for me, it was it was definitely comfort food. Uh, mm. The sides were I it, for some reason uh, it made me think completely of home home cooking. Do you, I have to ask you, did you have the bread pudding as a side with yeah, your? Yeah, it was a Wasn't mushroom. That amazing. A savory bread pudding. Oh. It is. It's a savory bread mm -hmm. pudding. But again, at the end, it's it's comfort food. And I think I think when I go out to eat, I go to step outside of my comfort. So I typically choose places that are gonna kind of mm. shake it up a little. And so mm -hmm. I think that was perhaps what was lacking for me. But the quality is excellent. Valid, I think valid criticism on the comfort zone because you know for me that food is just like a blanket. I want to wrap myself up in there. Especially, uh, I guess I find myself going there more in the fall and the winter mm -hmm. than I do in the summer. And what about desserts? Is is this uh, comfort desserts as well? Mm -hmm. Look at Cedric going. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, what'd you have? I love desserts. I have a huge sweet tooth, so. I had to any mini mini mo between four desserts that were on the menu, and eventually I chose the s'mores pie. Ooh. Mm. Two or three inches of, of marshmallow meringue on top mm. with melted chocolate and a graham cracker crust. I mean, just like a s'more, right. but, but in a, a big yeah. wedge. And uh, it was so rich, I didn't want anything else sweet for the right. rest of the day. What about you, dessert-wise? Um, well, we had the... Uh, Pineapple upside down cake. And oh. I, I, did you have that? No, they didn't have it that day. Oh. I like but you like that. pineapple upside down cake? <laughs> oh, my, my dining partners, uh, they likened it to, they said it was like tasting their childhood. Oh. And yeah. I, I've never had it before, actually. It never really? had I oh never my had it there. And, uh, you know, the pineapple, fresh and and Wasn't chewy. the canned stuff, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and the cake itself was just, you know, at one point I actually, you know, pushed a little bit of the pineapple and syrup off right. and the, the ice cream, which was fantastic. And ooh, ooh, I just mm, bit into that that little, mm, that sweet cake. <laughs> you need to do I know, I need to what kind of cake It was it? so good, it was so good, I, it was great. Esperanza's mm -hmm. going back just for that. <laughs> there. I recommend. Tell people why they why they need to make a, a drive to Marin and go to the bucket. Mm, well, you can do yourself a favor, uh, drive to Marin in any case. Uh, it is a destination place for, uh, I think, for a special occasion, but it's also just fantastic, wonderfully uh, produced uh, food for any time. All right, Esperanza? I think that it's a, a very a lovely place, a reliable place to definitely take the, the family member, the friend celebrating or visiting um, who doesn't have an adventurous palate but likes quality food. Okay, Fair enough. Cedric. Back for the pie? I've been absolutely <laughs> back for the pie. And I even think that there is some adventure to be found in the comfort food because I've never had pumpkin seed. I've never had um, maple flavor mixed into vinaigrette before. Mm -hmm. So there, there are little touches that they do that give it a step up on you know, kind of regular comfort food. And I would definitely go back for special occasions and in the winter. So I'll see y'all there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you'd like to join Cedric <laughs> in the group, it's the Buckeye Roadhouse on Shoreline Highway in Marin. The telephone number is 415-331-2600. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are recommended and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $40.
Next, Cedric gets happy just thinking about his restaurant. The spirit of generosity that he experienced on his travels to Rio is reflected in the good service and great meal every time he goes. It's on Franklin Street in San Francisco, and it's called Canto do Brasil. So Canto do Brasil has been open for about 12 years, and the significance of the name is that it means a corner of Brazil or a song of Brazil. And we want customers to have a true experience of what eating and being in Brazil is like when they enter our restaurant. And so when my mother came to the U.S. from Brazil, she brought along with her a lot of those recipes, a lot of these traditions from our family to share with customers here in San Francisco. The one of the native foods from Brazil that we use is manjoca, which is a root of a plant, a vegetable, um, and we use it a lot here at the restaurants. We toast it up and serve it on the side um, to be sprinkled on top of rice and beans, and we also peel it, cut it, and deep fry it. Here's manjoca. So when customers come to the restaurant, we want them to come here, enjoy themselves, discover new dishes, discover a new world of cuisine, which is Brazilian food, to have fun, to laugh, have a good time, and to leave really stuffed. Okay, Cedric, I hear that you get up and do a little bit of the samba, a little out. Oh, absolutely. Every time they pull me up, I can have a full stomach, but I'll get up there and do my little samba anyway. I and they have it. sambas on the weekend, samba dancers. They do. They have a floor show on Fridays and Saturday nights, and it's just a, a fantastic addition to what I already think is a great experience being mm -hmm. at Canto do Brasil. Churrascarias are so popular right now, which are a Brazilian right. export. Um, right. But this isn't a churrascaria. This has a little bit, um, you know, traditional fish dishes, etc. Right. Cetera. right. The, they they serve plate dishes, uh, and the one that I always get, nearly always get, is moqueca de pesci, which is like a fish stew. And mm -hmm. they, they have a slightly Americanized version at Canto do Brasil. They serve a, a really tender piece of red snapper with a wonderful coconut sauce, lemon, peppers, mm. a little bit of onion oh, on top of it. I'm ready for a caipirinha right now. Fantastic. Just Wow. <laughs> Love it. Now, this this was adventurous food. I mean, this is what you like. Did oh, you enjoy your experience there? I definitely did. Uh, unfortunately, I missed the dancers. But the food was, um, it was very satisfying. It was very fun. Um, I've traveled not to Brazil, but through Latin America and through the Caribbean. And it, it definitely was reminiscent Absolutely. of Caribbean coastal uh, sense to it, both in its atmosphere and in the flavors of the food. Um, I actually had the uh, feijoada completa. Mm -hmm. Oh, which is only on the weekends as well, it feijoada. It is, yeah, right. Friday through Sunday. And um, it, it, the name is appropriate because it is very much complete. Um, it's, it's a black bean stew, and black beans uh, are very starchy and can be challenging to flavor, but they seem to balance it very nicely with saltiness and... Sl and it's got sausages and meats, and it's yeah, a really... Yeah, slow-cooked right. pork, and mm -hmm. I'm a real meat eater, so <laughs> it is hard to go wrong. But in, a, in addition to that, they had, uh, as a side, collard greens. It was very simple food. Mm -hmm. I think it's very mm -hmm. simple. Um, but the, the collard greens were delectable. They were cooked perfectly. Farofa was a nice addition. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's certainly not something I can eat in mouthfuls. No. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. starchy. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a, a pile of, of um, toasted uh, yuca, ground yuca. Right. Um, but it, it is a very nice, adds a, a nice toasted, nutty, crunchy uh, addition to the what you, to your dish, both in the feijada and also on the on the collard greens. From the minute we walked in the restaurant, we were greeted with a genuine greeting. Hello, he knew my name okay. from the reservation. Took us to our table, and uh, can I just talk about those caipirinhas? Caipirinhas, you see, <laughs> see, oh, see those careful. cocktails. <laughs> Very potent, <laughs> but right. um, and it's cachaça, which is sort of Brazilian tequila, yeah. if you will, with lime and sugar. It felt yeah. like. Um, uh, the most uh, marvelous uh, fresh margarita right. uh, that I've ever had. And, and it will um, put you down. It really will. Yeah. You drink a few of those. Yeah. We walk right. around the block a couple of times <laughs> after yeah. one of those. Get some air. But uh, we found the food really exceptional. And um, we started with uh, a basket of uh, uh, calamari, mm -hmm. which was done in a way, kind of bathed in a wonderful sauce of cilantro, garlic, and lemon. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I, at first I thought they, they were almost onion rings. I've never seen uh, 
calamari like this, huge rings of it, as opposed to more of an Italian take, mm -hmm. which is you know the little uh, ringlets that we're used to. Right. So. Um, yeah, thank you for recommending <laughs> this place because uh, it was just fantastic for and, everyone. And the flavors are a mix of Caribbean and African and right. Latin American kind right. of you know spices and the three cultures of Brazil: indigenous, African, European, mostly Portuguese, mm -hmm. all come together. The covio, the collard greens, mm -hmm. come from the Africans. The farofa from the indigenous people in Brazil, and the the meats and sausages from the Portuguese. Mm -hmm. And feijoada is the national dish. Um, one thing that I like to do in San Francisco is um, to try the yuca at different places. Yeah. I love fried yuca. Yeah. So to try the there they call mandioca, but it's fried yuca. And um, so I was busy filling up on that. <laughs> I have never met a yuca aficionado, wow. actually. You are my first it. yuca aficionado, so. That is niche. It is so starchy. Right. You can go mm. very wrong in how you cook it, right. but mm. they, it was just very well cooked. It's delicious. All right, Cedric, it's your restaurant, so give us your quick summary. Love Canto de Brazil. I feel like you can always get a great experience going there, as I do. I take people from out of town so that they get a slice of kind of San Francisco life and the cuisines that are available to us here, but also get to do something slightly more adventurous in trying out a cuisine that they may not have ever had before. And what about you? It can go casual, you can dress it up, it can go whatever direction mm -hmm. you want it to because it is, I think it's more down home food. Mm -hmm. So the atmosphere can be romantic, it can be festive for your friends, or it can be a novel adventure for family who hasn't, or again, friends who haven't really explored that cuisine. So mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely think it was worth, worth exploring. And what about you? Would you go back? Did you enjoy it enough to do that? I certainly would go back, and I'm planning on going back. We went uh, for lunch, and so it didn't have a lot of the um, dancing, excitement, you know, pizzazz, you know, <laughs> the energy level turned up to 25. Mm -hmm. But um, I thought it was fantastic, and uh, we'll definitely be back. Good. Well, if you would like to go to Canto do Brasil, it's on Franklin in San Francisco, and the telephone number is 415 626-8727. It's open Monday through Saturday for lunch and every day for dinner. Reservations are recommended and the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. Esperanza's travels have taken her to South India, where she sampled the same intense, spicy flavors that she now finds at her pick. It's not fancy, it just serves authentic food. It's called Udupi Palace, and it's on University in Berkeley. <laughs> We come from Urpi, and Urpi is mostly, it's, it's a small town which is famous for its Krishna temples. When I came here, I didn't find any good South Indian restaurants. So I, I'm the first one to open the first South Indian restaurant here, 100% vegetarian in uh, 1996. Urupi is most, mostly a rice-based cooking because uh, Way back in the southern part of India, our main uh, agriculture cultivation is rice. So most of the food is cooked with either rice, coconut, and different type of spices. Like the dosas, it's made out of rice cream. It has, it comes with the different stuffings like spinach, uh, fresh vegetables, cheese. The uttapam's uh, rice pancakes. That also comes with different toppings like spinach and vegetables, potato. The menu changes every day. Everything is made fresh that day and different. Okay, Esperanza, you are a yuca aficionado, but <laughs> <laughs> you're clearly also an Indian food aficionado. Why is Udupi Palace so good? 
Well, let me say that prior to my travels in South India, what I was drawn to was the fact that it was different. The, the Indian cuisine, in the Bay Area at least, um, seems so limited to a more northern Indian, Pakistani style of food mm -hmm. that it's hard to get any kind of diverse options. It's great, and you know, within that realm, there are some restaurants are better than others, but again, it just tends to be the same dishes over and over. So when I discovered Udupi, I was was delighted that it was a, a completely different type of cuisine. One, it's completely vegetarian, and two, the spices that they use, uh, the, the way that things are flavored with the uh, coconut, a lot of coconut, young coconut is used, um, definitely drew me in. So already I was just taken in by the creativity, um, seeing vegetables that, uh, or getting to taste vegetables that I thought I was familiar with, and I don't know, you might want to try that eggplant. And you, must, <laughs> and you must have loved it. You just still don't go for it. Not because. the eggplant, but I would definitely recommend to other people the, the ras. Some, the soup, the rasam uh -huh. soup, which I started with, the as tomato an based soup, the tomato mm -hmm. and tamarind combination oh, was yeah. just so mm -hmm. yummy. Yeah, they do it right. Really spicy. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I was drinking that water <laughs> down, definitely, but mm -hmm. it was so good. Matter of fact, I want some now. It was <laughs> really, really sabroso. It was really. Great. Um, I would suggest that you that anyone who goes start off with a thali because mm -hmm. it's a sampler of many different things that they offer. I mean, you get it's far more food than I can eat. <laughs> and did you get this, Michael? Well, yeah, actually, we did. We got the thali um, combination platter because you know we went there for lunch and 201. Just about everybody around us was ordering that and. I'm not, uh, I've never really uh, had South Indian food before, so when I looked at the menu, it was, it was hard for me to navigate it. I mm -hmm. didn't understand um, really what I was uh, looking at and how things compared. So I asked my server for a little help, and um, unfortunately, he, he was polite and meant well, but he really couldn't help me out. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up having the Tali combination, which was fantastic. There was a concert of flavors going on in my mouth in that restaurant yeah. that I don't think I've ever experienced. One of my students actually recommended that I, mm. I have the Udupi Special Spring Dosa, so I did, and I wanted Lucky. to compare that one to one that I've had at another restaurant in San Francisco, and I actually like the Udupi Dosa, Spring Dosa, better. I described the the potatoes as little puffs of heaven Ooh. in my mouth because they were perfectly done. Potatoes, uh -huh. peas. I was scared of the red onions because you know I had I was eating at lunch and I had to go back out after lunch. So I was scared <laughs> to eat those red onions. Yeah, you but didn't finally, want the breath mints with I, you. I didn't have them with me, but finally just <laughs> relaxed and let the the tanginess of the onion contrast with the potato and the pea mm. combination. Great yeah. and decor. Yeah, obviously, mm -hmm. is is stripped you know, down. Right. Uh, nothing stark. Nothing. Yeah, very stark. Uh, but beautiful views of uh, the uh, you know Berkeley kind of campus street scene going on <laughs> on University <laughs> Avenue. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I'll tell you, my favorite time to go there is actually um, probably the early afternoon where there's still some nice light happening yeah. outside. It's minimal. It's like a uh, blank canvas and the food yeah. is really the color that's being added to your experience. So That's a great I way like to put it, it right? Or, absolutely. Yeah. I actually <laughs> liked it because for that reason because it was not trendy, because mm -hmm. it was not kind of this hipster mm -hmm. spot. It mm -hmm. was, okay, y'all come in here and this is the food and you're going to have an authentic mm -hmm. And you're not going to pay a lot. And you're not going to pay oh. a lot. All right. Well, it is your restaurant, so if people don't live in Berkeley, tell them why they need to make the trek to Berkeley. I think because uh, you put it very well, it is, it's a symphony of flavor that can only be experienced. And it's difficult to uh, describe again because you think that you're familiar with a potato or uh, an eggplant, but here it takes on a new life. And Michael? I think it's kind of fantastic that you can eat at some place and uh, experience something brand new like that. And for me, I give it a high, high thumb up. I'm coming back. You know, I'll, right. I'll be there a lot. All right. And Cedric. I'll be back as well <laughs> at Udupi <laughs> Palace. Spice I gotta tell is you, nice. you guys have a lot to do on your calendar, <laughs> <do>. you two. <laughs> we do. Spice is nice. But I also want to add, for people who don't like kind of overly spicy foods, there are things to, th there are things that they could have as well because the dosa wasn't overly spicy mm -hmm. and it was still yummy, yummy, yummy. So thumbs up as well. Udupi All right, Palace. three yummies. <laughs> yummy, yummy, <laughs> yummy. If you would like to try Udupi Palace, it's on University at Martin Luther King Jr. in Berkeley. 
The telephone number is 510-843-6600. It's open every day for lunch and dinner. Reservations are accepted and recommended on weekends. It's a cash-only place, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $15. Okay, I want to thank you guys. You were really articulate, fantastic guests. Did you have fun? We Absolutely. had fun. Yeah. All right. We featured Michael's choice of the Buckeye Roadhouse with what Esperanza says is reliably yeah. comfortable service and high quality but predictable menu. While Cedric just loved it and looks forward to returning to celebrate a special occasion. Cedric's Canto do Brasil in San Francisco also won favor with Michael, who intends to return for another fine Brazilian lunch and samba, <laughs> while Esperanza considered it a novel adventure and will take family and friends from out of town. And Esperanza's Udupi Palace in Berkeley also won praise as a wonderful find. Michael suggested that they were like a screaming auditorium of flavor conversations all speaking at high pitch. Mm. And Cedric <laughs> left the restaurant feeling full and happy. Now for all you wine lovers, did you know that there's a KQED wine club? You can find great discounts on international wines, recipes, and a lot more if you go to kqed.org slash wine club. So check it out. And don't forget to join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. This show is available in high definition, on demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. A KQED television production.